14 here, as soon as I get situated here. Uh, Exodus 14 in verse um, 13. Now, you know uh, the story where it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will see them no more. Now, what I want to say to you, in the Amplified, it says, be, uh, Stand firm and, and be very confident and undismayed and see the salvation. That word salvation there is prosperity, victory, saved, deliverance. You know, the Lord's saying, listen, don't get all wild up, you know, riled up here. Trust me in this. Even in this waiting period, you can imagine, just picture yourself being the Israelites coming out of 430 years of slavery. That's all you've known. And it's not that you like it, but you get familiar with it, right? And so it's time to move on. Just like God is saying to us, we are crossing over. But a lot of us have been in bondage in certain areas and in slavery. And, you know, the Lord is saying, listen, I'm allowing you to see where your heart's at for now so that you address it. Not to, it's not a condemning thing. It's a good thing. But I, I just picture myself and I think, Lord, have mercy. How would we in New Jersey be acting with Moses right now? They are crossing the Red Sea. And right, well, let me just back up. Right before they cross the Red Sea, they see the sea before them. And they see the Egyptians behind them. No way out. And, and we can liken that to today because some people are really, really struggling with panic and fear. And the Lord has an answer for you. The Lord's here to deliver you. He's our deliverer. But I'm going to tell you something. God always has a plan. And so as they got to that Red Sea, they were flipping out. And they were not happy with Moses, saying a lot of not nice things to him. Like, what in the world were you thinking of, Moses? Did you not take this into account? Even the Egyptians earlier on said, these people look confused. They don't look like they know what they're doing. And sometimes Christians can look that way. It might seem stupid when we're standing in faith. People might mock us. But here, God has a plan. So you continue to stand. You continue to stay in faith. Amen? So here they are in this dilemma, this situation. So Moses is getting a little upset as well. And, and so he said, um, you know, it says here, you know, the Lord says in verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and you hold your peace. The, the message version says, shut your mouth. <laughs> That's a little New Jersey, right? We have to shut our mouths. Watch what you're saying. Don't get all like, what's, what's the problem with God? How are we going to change? God's got it. Let's just align and let's submit to him. And so he says, the Lord will fight for you. Then Moses said, um, well, let me read it to you in both versions. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to Keep silent and remain calm. The message says, shut up, and I stay stizito, put a zip on your mouth, and don't say anything. That's what my mother would say. And so uh, then I love this part. It says, and the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? You speak to the children of Israel, and you tell them to move forward. And that word speak is command. It's, it's the Hebrew word debar. And we all have that right. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord is telling us, I command you to go forward. You speak to your situation. You prophesy and you say, I call those things as being not as though they are. And I am commanding that I'm not going to be stuck in fear. I'm not going to be stuck in panic. I'm not going to be stuck in an old mindset. And I command my situation to shift in Jesus' name. See, we have that authority. We have that right. I'm getting all hot over here now. And so, throw this over here. <laughs> And so and then it says, but you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry, dry ground through the midst of the sea. See, he's, he's confident. He's saying, use your authority. And you decree that thing in faith, and it shall happen. See, that's the authority that we all have. And God is calling us to rise up to a greater level of authority. We've always had it, but we have to act on it. Yeah. We have to be people of action. So... They do it. Moses lifts up his staff, the, the, the rule of authority, and the sea splits. And, you know, and I love it where it says God will fight for you. You know, he makes war. He's doing battle for us. We will overcome and we will prevail. So they're crossing and they're crossing over. And then again, what happens is um, 
they, uh, you know, again, they're, they're, they see the Egyptians now coming after them again. They're like, are you kidding me? We think we're making a headway. Now the Egyptians again? But see, again, the water started to, to drown the Egyptians. And in um, Exodus 14, no, I'm sorry, it's gonna, we're going to go to Exodus 15 here. No, Exodus 14. I love this part in 27. It says, Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. The Lord directed him because they were, again, really scared. And, and listen, we're all human, right? We get nervous. We get afraid at times, but we can't allow that fear to control us. We can't allow the anger, the judgments, the nasty words to control us. It's like, Lord, I know here's what I'm experiencing, but I choose to trust you. And that's where they were at. So what happened was it says here, and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. And when the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Now, today, that's what I want to say to you. The Lord is overthrowing this virus into the midst of the sea. And that word overthrew there means to shake out the idea of a rustling mane, which accompanies a lion's roar. So the Lord, the lion of Judah, is roaring over our situation. And so, you know, there's an end coming here to this whole thing. Amen. And we're going to come out stronger and greater in... Um, uh, in, in, in Psalms 111.5 in the Amplified, it says, The Lord gave food and provision to those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. And he always will remember his co uh, covenant forever, and it's imprinted on his mind. The Lord provided for them. He, he provided every way uh, for them. You know, their clothes didn't wear out. He provided food for them. That's, that's what God is saying to us. I want you to press into me in a way, and I want you to trust me and know that I am providing for you and that I haven't left you and I haven't forsaken you. Now, I want to read you a dream a little seven-year-old boy had. And uh, this is uh, Will Ford's son. And there were two little boys that had a dream that, that just really ties into this, I feel. It says, our son had a dream in four nights in a row. And um, so, hold on a minute. That's not the one. Hold on. Uh, anyway, he had a dream. And, and in this dream, in a dream, he saw a huge green plant which had a crown on its head, and it was squeezing the world. The more it squeezed the world, the more hands or tentacles it grew. This is a seven-year-old kid, okay? Out of nowhere, a lion that had the body of a lamb appeared, and it destroyed the plant and ripped it to pieces. Then a day appeared in my dream, and uh, the dream ended. Um, and it says here, so he had the same dream four days in a row, and um, the lion of Judah appeared. To, the, um, to this kid in the dream, and that the Lion of Judah, uh, basically, I, I, I thought it says here, then the lion, it was a lion lamb. It had a, the lion's head and the lamb's body, and it said that the lion lamb destroyed it and ripped it to pieces as in other dreams. And he saw, and, and this is what the child said, and again, I saw at the end of the dream that this virus will end April 30th. And then there was another little boy I don't know how, maybe six years of age, and, and he said that the Lord spoke to him and said it, the dream will end April 30th. So the Lord is raising up little children, and so they may be little, little but they're powerful. So I just want to encourage you to encourage your kids to be praying, to be praying and decreeing over this whole situation. It's an economic situation. It's trying to take out the economy. There's a bigger picture at hand here. But you see, the Lord is saying, I see everything. He knows the end from the beginning, and our light is the spelling darkness. So as we continue to decree the word of the Lord, it's uprooting yeah. the root system of the enemy that's trying to prevail because that little boy saw the root system that was trying to squeeze the earth. I, I, I was trying to take pictures of it because we don't have a printer at home that we have to have. Um, <laughs> right. That, that's right because God doesn't want you to say anything. We don't have our printer, and I can't print anything out. So anyway, uh, I would have had it all in order. But, um, but anyway, um, you know, so 
this, this, this pandemic just trying to destroy things worldwide. But God says it's not going to happen because he's the king seated on the throne. He has final say, not the government. He has final say. And he has, every, he has seen every hidden handshake, every, every yoke, every, every demonic plot and ploy of the enemy that they may be mocking, but I prophesy to you, everything that's been hidden will be uncovered and exposed in Jesus' name. I prophesy that to you because we, we serve the spirit of truth. So then it goes on. So we know that they were overthrown and, and, and there was, you know, great victory. And, um, you know, and they saw the Lord do a great work. And it says in verse 30, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord, his servant Moses. Now, they, then in verse 15, uh, Moses and, and uh, says here, then Moses and the children of Israel um, sang this song and said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God, I will exalt him. Now listen to this. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. We, we need, there's, he's, a, he's a God of war because there's a battle out there. And we have to learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? And we have to recognize that we are a people of authority. But the way that the enemy will get us is through this. Now here, they're singing this song. They're worshiping God. And then what happens is they start to get, um, you know, uh, they're, as they're going forward, they're, they're getting thirsty. And they're not happy now. They're, you know, one minute, it's no different like when you go to a football game. When I used to go with Peter. One minute they love the team. Next minute if they make a wrong play, they hate the team. You know, so fickle. And we can't be like that with the Lord. You know, he's good, he's not good. What is he doing? We trust him. We don't trust him, we do trust him. Come on. We have to, in this season, get our root system down in faith where we trust the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. And the Lord is saying, listen, I'm allowing you to see your heart where you're at, not to accuse you, not to condemn you, but to address those root systems so that you can get healing and deliverance in this season. He's a God of deliverance. Amen. I don't want anything that's not necessary, that shouldn't be in me in this crossover time. And I just really felt like this too. For those, you know, some of you may be watching and you really have struggled with a lot of guilt. There's shame. And in that shame, the shame is there as a result of trauma that occurred in your life, abuse. But the Lord has seen that, and the Lord know, wants you to know that he is there for you and that the Lord wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to heal the fears in your heart. He wants to heal the insecurities where you don't love yourself. And I'm telling you, the Lord is calling you back to him. He's saying, from before you were in your mother's womb, I've known you. I've known you. I've loved you. Would you accept his love today? And I just want to pray right now for those who have been struggling, who you just feel like you're alone and you're floundering and you're on the outside looking in. The spirit of God is speaking to you right now. And he's just saying to you how much he loves you and that he's the God of the turnaround. You may think you're stuck with your behavioral attitudes. God is saying, no, you're not. I'll change. You don't know what all these people were like. <laughs> you don't know what I was like. But God... In his mercy and grace, his mercies are new every morning, turned us around, healed our broken hearts. It was a process, but we had to do one thing. We had to choose to surrender to God. In my natural mind, it didn't make any kind of sense. That's, that's going to heal me? Yeah, that's going to heal you. The great I am, the God of all peace, will heal your broken heart, will heal the disappointments, will heal your discouragements. You know, a lot of times we look to things. That's what, that's what Israel was getting set free from, all their idols. We look to drugs. We look to movies. We look to a man. We look to a woman. We look to, you know, financial breakthrough. Of course, we all want that. But that's not, you know, we can't serve mammon, right? But God is saying, look to me because I'm your healer. And I'm your deliverer. Give me a chance. That's what he said to me. Someone, when they were ministering to me, said, what do you have to lose? 
And I thought, yeah, that's true. What do I have to lose? It was a prayer that I prayed, and I said, Jesus, I, I surrender to you, and I, I ask you to, to turn my life around. But, you know, I didn't know where to go to church because I, I just didn't know. I was raised up in a denomination that never taught about being born again in a relationship with Jesus. And I, um, I, I did read the Bible. And there's so much power in the Word of God because in meditating on the Word is what delivered me. It was powerful. And then I, I connected with people, and then they brought me into further healing and deliverance. And then, it, you know, we never arrive. None of us ever arrive. Amen? So now what happens is, now this is the piece that I, I feel that is very important for us. In, in Exodus 15, 23, the Bible says that um, when they came to... Um, they came to, uh, let me read verse 22. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went off a distance three days, about 33 miles in the wilderness, and found no water. Now, how, what are you like when you're hot and thirsty? And I'm sure they were hungry. So it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm judging them, because <laughs> I can just imagine what we would be like. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink its waters because they were bitter, Therefore, it was named Mara. And the people grew discontented. Oh, God, how shocking. And grew, grumbled at Moses, saying, what are we going to drink? Then he cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord showed him a tree, a branch, of which he threw into the waters, and the waters became sweet. And that does represent the cross. And then the Lord said to him, he said, listen. He said, there's an ordinance I'm making. He said, if you would diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of your God, and do what is right in his sight, listen to his commandments, and keep foremost in your thoughts, and actively obey all his precepts and statutes, then I will put none of these diseases on you that have been on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. And the children came to Elam, where the 12 springs of waters, and, and they camped there besides the water. Then it says here in verse 16, then they were now um, on the 15th day, the second month after they left the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the Israelites grew discontented and murmured and rebelled against Moses in the wilderness. And now they're yelling at him. They're saying, listen, would we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread until we were full? For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill us, <laughs> this entire assembly with hunger. And so then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will cause brain, <clears throat> brain, bread to rain from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day so that I may test them to determine whether or not they will walk obediently in my instruction or law. <clears throat> Throughout 16, 17, I mean, you just need to read through numbers. They murmured, they complained, and they were obstinate. <clears throat> no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need water. Thanks. So... You know, and that's, that's where we're at now because even yesterday I'm sitting home and I thought, oh, Lord, have mercy. I am stuck in this house another day. I, you know, I said, I just want to go out somewhere. I want to go down the shore. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the Lord says, and yeah, exactly, Tricia. What are you starting to do here? Get frustrated by where we're at. And so the Lord is just saying to us, and I just want, really want to encourage you, watch your heart. Watch your mouth at this time. What, don't, don't get involved with all the people, what they're saying, and who's fighting about how selfish it is for us to open up businesses now, who's saying, you know, to open up businesses. Now. Just watch your heart. Because, see, the enemy understands that we are falling hard after God, but he knows the blockages. He knows the, the, the roadblocks to put in our path. He knows the buttons to push us to get us, to get back into that place of unbelief because that's what was happening here. They were just, every, every situation they encountered, they started murmuring and rebelling against Moses and really getting angry with him because of fear, because they didn't have vision. They didn't trust God. They didn't know that he's got their back. And I prophesy, and I just want to encourage you today, God has your back. I, I really believe with all my heart that, that we're going to be provided for. Amen. I had a dream, and uh, in the dream, um, the Lord was telling, he was giving me a message to preach. 
And in this dream, this is like a week and a half, two weeks ago. And this is the dream that the Lord um, gave me. In the dream, the Lord told me to preach and tell the people to come out of agreement with a spirit of poverty, a poverty mindset that has kept my people in bondage and has limited us. He said, I want you to tell the people to believe me for unlimited mindset. Amen. And I thought, wow. And so he said, as we are crossing over, he said, what I want you to do. Now, he was speaking to me, obviously, first. And he's saying, listen, I want you to break your agreement. And the Bible talks about mammon, right? In, in the New Testament, it says you can't serve God and mammon. Mammon, is it, it was a God that they served. And, um, and mammon promises only what God can give. Mammon promises, uh, you know, I wrote here, happiness. It promises peace. It promises joy. You'll, you're, you're set for life. That's what it promises. But, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, we all love to have money in the bank. But mammon's not my God. Amen. And that's what the Lord said. He said, watch your murmuring and complaining because we're at a place right now who's not getting their stimulus checks, who's, uh, you, know, you know, businesses are folding. And I'm not minimizing any of that. I'm just telling you the dream that the Lord said to me. He said, we have unlimited access with him. Now, when the Israelites were in the wilderness, I'm sure they were really frightened, as most of us would be. How in the world is God going to supply food for over a million people? And everybody was at a different place. Think about it. A million people, you have your people in the front that are getting directives here. You're, you have your people in the back that don't know what in the world's going on over there. They all had to learn to hear from God. They all had to learn to submit and press in. And that's what God is asking us to do here. Yes, we have the prophet speaking. Yes, we have this one giving the word of the Lord. But what is the Lord saying to you in this time? If you're afraid, if you're struggling, if you're panicking over your finances, repent. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me for, look, it's, it, there's a fine line here. Hear what I'm saying. Forgive me for just looking to that to be my joy, my sustenance. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, not our finances. Amen. Now, we need finances, and God's our provider. The Bible says he's Jehovah Jireh. He says, I see what you're going through, and I provide. But that's in faith. Now, I want to reach in, in closing. You know, I don't have to go all through. Read it yourself. Go through Exodus uh, 14, 15, and 16, because they are, you know, murmuring and complaining at the kazoo. And then when you read, you go, just go through Numbers, because the book of Numbers, oh, my gosh. Woo-wee, they were complaining. And, um, you know, and, and it's so easy. It's so easy for all of us to go there, and we all know it. But we want to really, uh, you know, watch our heart at this time. We're going to pray. But I want to reach you. I just, I've been studying this. I read it in the Passion Version, the Message Version, so many versions, but I think I like the Amplified the best. And this is in Romans chapter 4 about faith. Because God wants us to develop our faith. For those of us that, that need more faith regarding our finances, those of us who need more he faith regarding uh, our healing, those of us who need faith regarding our family life, I want you to hear this. And you know, Moses was a man of faith. And, um, and it says here that, um, that he was, um, um, there was a confirmation of righteousness that came to him by his faith. Now, we all know, some of you might not know, we don't earn righteousness. We are righteous because of the blood, but through faith. You see, we are in right standing with God, not because of how good we are. None of us are good enough. But because of the precious blood of Jesus and faith. It's our faith. So, in Romans, it says here, and I'll start with Romans 4, 16. It says, therefore, inheriting the promises depends entirely on faith. That is confident trust in the unseen God. Can you say that? Confident trust in the unseen God. In order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham, not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for the Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. 
Now, in verse 17, as it is written in Scripture, I have made you a father of many nations in the sight of him in whom he believed, that is God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. You know, we call those things with being not as though they are. And it says in 18, I love this, in hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations as he had been promised by God. So number, so numberless shall your descent, numerous shall your descendants be without becoming, listen, without becoming weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now listen to it. It says now as good as dead <laughs> for producing children since he was about a hundred years old and he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he did not waver or doubt and unbelief concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that God had the power to do what he promised. Therefore, his faith was credited to him as righteousness, right standing with God. Now, not for his sake alone, as it was written, written that it was credited to him, but for our sake, to whom righteousness will be credited as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. From the, yeah, from the dead. So listen, what, what is that dead situation that you're dealing with? Listen, your finances are not a dead thing. You may think the enemy's whispering to you that you're not going to overcome this, that you're not going to come out. I, I say, I disagree. I prophesy you are coming out greater and stronger. Now is the time, like it says here, while he was, he was waiting, there was a long period of time before Sarah got pregnant. She was not able to, they, they were old. You get it? It was, it, there was an impossibility. But God, and many of you may say, there's no way. It's a dead situation. It doesn't seem like I can break out. I'm telling you right now, he grew in, in, empowered by faith. He grew strong and he gave glory to God. God's going to get glory out of this thing. And that's what I want you to meditate. Read through that whole thing. Meditate on chapter 4 in Romans. Because he didn't look at his situation. Let me read it to you. The, uh, the King James, it says... And not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body dead. He didn't consider it. He says, I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I see. I know in whom I believe. And, and he says, then it goes on to say, he staggered not. I love that. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Right now, let's pray. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Where we have been focused on what you can, what's not happening. Lord, where we have been in unbelief, where we have been doubting you. God, where we have been listening to mammon whisper to us, we're not going to make it. God, forgive us. Lord, we, we repent for trusting in man, for trusting in man's ways. Lord, we know the bank is not our answer. You are. You own all the gold and silver, and our natural minds have a hard time understanding all this. <clears throat> but God, by the Spirit, we receive your truth. We thank you, Lord, that every single one of us, you have, the Bible says that you have tattooed us in the palm of your hand. Each one of our faces, you love us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you know every situation we're going through. And the Lord's saying to us, I've got a plan. I'm your provider. I want you to learn to trust in me in this area where you're not successful because of what you have in the bank. You're successful. I'm successful because of our God. Amen. And he will provide. He will make a way where there is no way. I promise you that. And I've shared this testimony before, and I, I didn't even think of it, but just up, up until now. And um, when I worked for the airlines, um, you know, I had gotten saved and, you know, I wasn't exactly the greatest employee at the time. I wasn't saved and I didn't like my job and, you know, had a rotten attitude. All that had to change, right? And thank God in his mercy. And, and I was very young in the Lord and, I, and I, I really had to get a transfer out of the department I was at. Otherwise, I would have been fired. And I knew <clears throat> that... My behavior and my actions really didn't warrant favor from God. Now, I did repent, 
But you know, like our old religious mindset would feel like you have to do penance for three years before God can answer you. And thank God for his mercy, right? And, and I had prayed, and I said, Lord, you know, I, I'm asking you for a miracle. I am scared out of my wits to apply for this job, to transfer, but I have to get out of here. I mean, it was drug and fest. I mean, there's just so many crazy things going on. And even my supervisors, they, they had to uh, uh, receive my, my um, application, but my one super, she just laughed in my face. She said, you will not get it. And I, in, in, my, in my brain, I thought, well, with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And I thought, I don't care what you think. See, that's the thing. We, don't, we have to get to the point where I don't care what man says. I care what God says because in Luke 137, it says that with God, absolutely nothing, nothing shall be called impossible when you have faith. And so, <clears throat> so as I went for the interview, the manager there said to me, he looked at my record and he said, why in the world would I hire you? And I said to him, you know, I, I said, I, I agree. I said, I know, I wasn't a good employee. I said, but I, if you give me a chance, I promise you, I will not call in sick in Puerto Rico. I will not call in sick. I will, uh, you know, if I, have to, if I have to call in sick, I'll just quit. I said, but just give me an opportunity because I always called in sick. I just didn't, you know, it, it was not right. So he looked at me and he said, I don't know why. He said, but I'm going to give you this job. And I'm telling you, that's a favor and a mercy of God. It wasn't because I was so righteous. It wasn't because I, I lived this lily pure life. It wasn't. It was because I chose to trust God and I cried out. I said, Lord, have mercy. So I felt like <clears throat> with your even your finances, whatever your situation is, don't look at what's at hand. Now, I get that we have to look at numbers and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying, don't let that make your decision as to how you're moving forward and how you're going to trust God. Trust Him. Lord, I've done the best that I've could. I, I, I tithe. I give. It's, it's important to tithe. You know, some people say that's Old Testament. It's New Testament. Tithe. Give. The, the Bible says when you read through 1 Corinthians 9, read it in the message. It says, live generously like God. You know? But, but, but ask the Lord for His mercy. Ask the Lord for his strategy. Ask the Lord for, you know, his wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And the fear of the Lord means surrender to God and obey him. So I just want to encourage you with this word today. Watch your mouth and, and know that he's on your side. He loves you so very much. God wants us to come out as his victorious, strong army. He's calling the remnant to rise up, to know in whom we believe and know our authority, know the faith that we have, that, that we don't look to the left or to the right, but we keep our eyes fixed upon him. And that we have dominion authority. God gave it to us way back in Genesis 1. And that we are to call those things which be not as though they are. We need to act on it. We need to know who we are, that we are strong in Christ. And that, that he watches over his word to perform it. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are faithful and true. We thank you, Lord, that we shall decree that thing and it shall be established unto us. Lord, that there is power in our decree. Lord, we thank you that, that you are making a way right now. Right now where it seems so dead, where it doesn't even seem a way that you can make a way. But you are, Lord, and we are trusting you. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, and that we are excited and we decree victory. We are shouting victory, victory, victory. We are more than conquerors. This isn't hype. This is fact. This is what we have experienced. It's an experiential gospel. And that's what I love about God. He personalizes our, his walk with each one of us. So, Lord, we just thank you again. We thank you for the shalom, the peace of God. And we thank you, God, that you are the God of breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.